Welcome. This is a short video to explain about different reed switches and what to look for when choosing a reed switch for a model railway automation. This video is only about choosing a suitable reed switch, but I've already created a video on how you can use the reed switch with a Raspberry Pi or Arduino to detect the position of a model train. If you don't already know, then a reed switch is a small device which contains a switch which is operated by a magnet. This is how many burglar alarms detect a door being left open and you've probably seen them in houses or on building fire exits. For the model railway, which is what's been used for here, then the reed switch is normally installed within the track and connects back to some kind of control system, such as a Raspberry Pi or Arduino. A magnet is then fitted underneath the locomotive or sometimes a wagon or carriage and when the train passes it closes the contact. This can be used to automate the train by having it stop at a station or could be used to close barriers or flashlights to warn about an approaching train. In my earlier video I used a traditional glass bead reed switch such as the one shown here. I've used these many times in the past for indoor model railways. In fact the first time I ever used one was part of my GCSE design technology back in 1990. The glass bead reed switch is very small and can be easily installed on most model railways, even end gauge. With this kind of reed switch, then a wire needs to be soldered onto the metal legs of the reed switch. The problem I had with these is when I tried to use them on my outdoor model railway. The glass has a tendency to break, resulting in either the contacts being permanently stuck together or else permanently apart. Therefore, this video is about looking at different kinds of reed switches and how suitable they are for model railways and particularly outdoor model railways. This shows five different types of reed switches along with two different types of magnets. I'll cover all of these as part of this video. This first magnet is the standard reed switch magnet. It is small and compact but does not have any method of fixing it to anything. This actually works well when placed under a locomotive which can be held temporarily using blue tack, sometimes known as power tack. For a more permanent solution, but without damage to your train, you can use self adhesive sticky pads or something similar. This alternative magnet is bigger than the previous example, but includes two holes for mounting it. It is intended to go with a similar looking reed switch below. This is good if you're looking to attach a reed switch to a large surface, such as a safety cover protecting machinery but it's a bit big for connecting to a locomotive. Another advantage of this magnet is that it's fully coated, so it should be protected a bit more from the elements. That's not a concern when connected to a locomotive, but maybe if you have a different use in mind, it might. I did think that the larger magnet may work from further away, but I don't believe this is the case. Whilst I didn't take accurate measurements, I found that the distance at which the magnet activated the reed switches was about the same as the other magnets. Now to look at the reed switches. The highlighted one is the glass bead reed switch, which I've already mentioned. Here you can see its size against the other reed switches, and this one is one of the smallest. Although be aware that different suppliers have different sizes. I have some that are about one c centimeters long which is fairly typical but then some can be one one and a half centimeters or longer this may not sound much but it's one and a half times the size of the smaller one so that's something to be aware of when looking to buy them I did a comparison with the other reed switches for how close the magnet needs to be thinking that perhaps some were more sensitive and found but I found they were actually fairly similar the main benefit of this glass bead reed switch is that it's small and easily hidden but because it's so delicate I recommend this is used on indoor layouts only. As you can see from this next reed switch some reed switches are designed to be PCB mounted. Potentially this could be useful for use in a control panel or similar but it just makes it harder to solder to if you want to use in a model railway so I wouldn't recommend this type. This reed switch is still very small, but much more robust than the glass bead reed switch. It comes with wires pre-connected, which may be useful if you do not want to solder yourself, 
although it's likely you want to extend the cable to reach to your controller. Note that although both wires come from the same side, it is still operated the same way in that it needs to be positioned lying on its side. The read switch is black, which may make it easier to hide in certain layouts. I'd suggest this as a good alternative to the glass bead read switch for indoor layouts. It is more expensive, but also more robust. This is the one I've used on my outdoor G-Scale railway. It would be too big for double O or smaller trains, but fits nicely within the tracks on G-Scale. It is weatherproof, which is useful. At the moment I have it set within the tracks, but I may look at using mountain holes or a 3D printed cradle to sit it in to keep it more secure. It is coloured black, which you can help in disguising it, as it is quite large. It has wires already connected, and whilst you may need to extend them, they are thick enough to use a terminal block or something similar if you do not want to solder the wires. Depending upon the switch, some of these can be used for switching higher voltages. This is normally up to 240 volts, allowing it to be used for switching mains electricity directly. This is more than previous examples. But it's not something I'd want to use for a railway, where it's far safer to switch the lower voltage. The biggest downside to this is the cost. They cost around £4, which is almost 10 times the cost of the glass bead reed switch. Even at this price, it shouldn't exactly break the bank, at least not compared with the cost of track and locomotives, etc. But it may be a factor if you're looking to install a lot of them. Despite the extra cost, this is the one I recommend for use in an outdoor railway. This final one is a large cylindrical version. It is waterproof and can be used outdoors. This particular one is blue, although you can get black ones as well. The cable connects directly to the cylindrical reed switch. The main disadvantage to this is that the cable is quite large and does not flex as easily as the separate connections on the other reed switches. This makes it hard to mount the reed switch within the tracks, although not impossible. It is cheaper than the previous one, but the difficulty in positioning the cable means that I wouldn't recommend it. A few things to note. All the ones I have used are normally open. This means that the switch is normally in the open position but closes when the magnet comes near. It is possible to get other types which are normally closed if you need that. Although if using an Arduino or Raspberry Pi you can handle either through the software. Another thing to note is that for best operation the magnet and reed switch need to be oriented the same direction. Based on this selection the magnet and reed switch that I've highlighted are the ones that I've used on my outdoor railway. For indoor railway, then I suggest the glass bead or small cylindrical reed switch instead. This has just been a quick guide to a few different reed switches. I hope this is useful if you're looking at model railway automation. If you've not already seen it, then I suggest you watch my video on the use of the reed switch to control my model railway, which is shown here and linked in the description. You may also want to look at my model railway playlist which includes the full series on train automation. If you found that useful, then you might like to subscribe to my YouTube channel, which includes other videos on maker activities, including model railway automation and creating railway models using a 3D printer. Thanks for watching.